Welcome to today's Greedy 3D. Well, some time ago, I made myself a winter soldier model with the cap, and I was so taken with the arm that I thought, I'm going to make myself a bigger winter soldier arm, and that's exactly what I did. I'll show you where to get it, how to paint it. Stay tuned. <laughs> The arm we're going to be making can be found on do3d.com. It's a cost of $29 on here. There's quite a few around the internet, so probably a good idea to have a little bit of a scatter around the internet and see what you can find. But I quite like this one, and I also found the hand on the same website. Now, you don't need to do the hand necessarily. You can just keep it at the arm, but I wanted to do the whole whole shebang really so same place for both files and uh, this is how I got them to fit on my printer so I've placed the first part of the arm into Cura and as you can see on my end of five and and most people have a similar sized build plate it's just not going to fit now I could reduce this in size that's feasible that's an option but I don't really want to I want it to be absolutely screen prop size so I'm going to need to cut that up so that it fits onto my build plate. So I'm going to use a program called Slicer. And there we go. And there is the same file in Slicer. Now, what do we do to cut that up? OK, so I want you to select the file, go to cut at the top. Now, there will be some delays because Slicer is quite processor intensive and it seems to hang a while. So I'll probably end up speeding through bits of this video. But don't be surprised if things seem like they're just hanging in midair and you're getting the spinning wheel of death. It's doing its calculation -y bits. OK, and there we go. So if the first sort of cut level is done. It's a Z axis cut. Now, this little box that pops up here, what I want you to click is both parts so you can keep the upper and the lower part and there you go and it's just cut it up right down the middle really and I've used the Z axis because I want to give it two flat edges to print and it makes it easier to stick together as well so once you've got that cut and uh, it's automatically put it dead in the center if not 172 was the magic figure perform the cut again don't be surprised if it hangs for a while OK, and there we go. And it's cut the part into two. So what do we do now? OK, well, we're going to save each individual part. So I want you to select one, either one, it doesn't matter. So in this case, we'll select the one on the right. We'll tell it to delete. We will export SDL. We will save that file onto our desktop. And we're just going to call it Winter 1. And we'll save it. Now that's save one of the STL files. We'll select Plater and Undo. We'll then get rid of the file that we've just saved, which was that one. And we're going to save this one. And this one we are going to save in the same place, but we're going to call it Winter 2. And let's move back across into Cura and see what that's done. OK, so now back in Cura, as you can see, we've got a much more manageable size to piece to work with now it's still not showing it's fitting entirely but all we need to do is rotate it just a little bit to get it to fit have a little bit of a tweak and a poke with it just to move it into a position where it sits on the bed there we go and now that will print nicely and if you notice it's printing on the flat surface uh, and that's what we want so that we can have a nice uh, flat surface to glue the two halves together. Now what I've used is standard quality and I've also used tree supports because it will need supports in this area and uh, when you slice this it will take around about one day, four hours, one day to eight hours depending on your print speed to print. So that's the first part and there's the second part loaded into printer. Now what we need to do is get this on its flat edge and the way we do that is we will select the file, we will select this option here which is rotate the far right option which is select face to align scroll in so you can see the flat edge and just click the flat edge that will automatically then place it on your build plate move it to where you want to move it to and there you go simple as that same thing again standard quality we're going to use tree supports there will be some supports in there and we are going to slice it again that's going to take you about one day one day four hours depending on your print speeds etc to print so we've moved that across now to our end of five and we have printed it so this is using my end of five with some tin mori pla 
and I've swapped halfway through to some GTEC PLA. Um, end of five, end of three, fairly similar build plate sizes. The end of five does a little bit more height, but uh, as you can see there, the uh, the output is looking rather nice. I did do a raft on this one, didn't really mean to, uh, but I've got the setting set uh, and I turned it off on the second one, as you can see. And this is the upper part of that arm printing now. And, and I think you'll agree with me that the quality on standard setting doesn't look too bad at all. It's not going to need too much tweaking and twiddling at the end of the day, although we will give it a little bit of sanding. Um, a few hours there, one day and an hour have been, uh, been whirling around. So there's the two parts now out and printed and glued together and I'm using the trusty fruit bowl to hold them together to glue. As you can see the quality doesn't look too bad at all and once it's all been glued together I've used just a bit of basic wood filler to fill the gaps and I'm going to sand it down lightly and that will be ready then for some undercoating. So I've printed the bottom part of the heart, the arm in exactly the same way, cut it into two parts and glued them together, stuck them together with some uh, super glue, some Gorilla Glue and used some wood filler to fill the gaps in the middle. Now I'm taking my trusty mouse sander and a 180 grit sand paper and I'm going to just give it a really good blast all across the surface, especially on the joins and especially where I can see there's a few little glitches or little bits that are sticking out. So now it's been sanded, it's time to prime it and I'm just using some high coat grey primer to give it a base layer and just cover up some of the imperfections and some of the join lines that have been made by the wood filler. Nice even coats allowed to dry and then giving it another coat again just to build it up in slow layers and then we move to the hand itself which I've done on the resin printer, the Elegoo Mars 2 Mono using some water washable uh, Elegoo resin and as you can see it's made of a main palm and the fingers which are all in two parts all printed really well in just two bouts I did cram the build plate for the fingers but they all came out absolutely fine the Elegoo Mars as usual my uh, go-to printer for things like this and the detail was pretty amazing uh, now I got really friendly with glue on making the hand. Uh, there was lots of little parts, lots of parts to stick together, lots of parts to balance and to try to get them to stick. And I've not really found an easy way of doing things, but um, I don't think I'll be using my fingerprint to get into any bank account at the moment because my fingerprints are just glue. And as you can see, it was a fiddly job. I've used a bit of a cable tie just to hold the, the opening hole where the fingers go in together so that I get a clear, clean stick. But there you go, there's the hand all done. All finished. I've used a little bit of wood filler to just fill in some of the gaps there but uh, I'm really pleased how the hand has come out and uh, I'm sure you'll agree it looks, uh, looks really good. What I am going to do is paint it silver and then I'm going to be getting a fingerless black leather glove and putting that over it anyway just to finish the effect off but really pleased. So it's a bit of an amalgamation of FDM and resin for the hand and um, there we go hand all finished. And now for the best bit, the final coat. I've used some Rust-Oleum metallic chrome to give it that metallic vibranium look. Um, I've given it a few light coats, just building layer upon layer. And, and look at that. It looks fabulous, doesn't it? It's metallic. It's shiny. Just make sure you go on the inside as well, just because that's the bit you might be seeing there. And, and that's the paint done. Of course, we've had to mask off the star to give it its coat of, of red, as is the Winter Soldier's arm. So the next time you see it now, it's going to be all finished and ready for display.
Fast.